Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about an extremely unusual complication, a microcatheter that got stuck in a coronary artery and uh, could not be removed. Uh, we'll go over strategies uh, for how to get it out. The patient is a 50-year-old man with uh, hypertension uh, who has been having persistent exertional angina uh, despite multiple medications. Uh, his echo was normal. Uh, his nuclear stress tests uh, showed infralateral ischemia, and so he was uh, referred to us. Um, on cath, the RCA and LED had only mild to moderate disease. Uh, you see the left circumflex here. Um, there is a, a severe stenosis uh, in the mid to distal circumflex that correlates uh, with his nuclear stress test, and that is probably uh, causing uh, his angina. All right, so um, it looks uh, fairly straightforward, uh, not particularly calcified, not out of bifurcation. Uh, it doesn't seem to be YouTube worthy. Should be a piece of cake. Uh, so we used a, a six French EBU 3.5 guide, a, a BMW wire, and advanced a, a tool by 12 millimeter uh, compliant balloon uh, to predilate. Uh, but uh, surprisingly enough, the uh, tool balloon uh, could not cross the lesion. Uh, what to do? So uh, we go to our algorithm uh, for a, a balloon uncrossable lesion uh, at a, a community hospital. Uh, my usual first move is just to try a smaller balloon. I reach for a 1.5 by 20 millimeters balloon, but that still uh, could not cross. Um, I wedged the balloon into the lesion and inflated it anyway, uh, thinking that I could stretch the opening of the lesion just a bit uh, so that the other balloons uh, could cross, but that uh, didn't work. I still can pass another 1.5 or a, a 2.0 balloon. So uh, my second usual move is to improve my backup. Uh, my threshold for using a guideliner is very low. Uh, but despite the guideliner in place and advanced deep into the vessel, nearly to the lesion, I still could not get either a 1.5 or 2.0 millimeter uh, balloon to cross. Um, you see here that the guideliner and guide are both uh, getting uh, kicked back. All right, well, uh, no problem. Uh, my third move uh, is to try to improve my rail. Um, I'm going to change my BMW wire to something uh, stiffer, uh, such as a BHW or a Grand Slam. Um, to do that, I generally like to use a microcatheter with a tapered tip, uh, such as a turnpike. Uh, the tapered tip can sometimes stretch the lesion a little bit as you're advancing it. Uh, but unfortunately for us, uh, the turnpike could not cross the lesion. Uh, I then tried the lower profile turnpike LP, but that didn't cross either. So we wedged a, a turnpike LP as far as it could go, and were able to get a BHW wire across the lesion uh, into the distal circumflex. Um, but despite using the stiffer wire and a guide liner, uh, that 1.5 millimeter balloon uh, still could not cross. We tried a 1.2 millimeter balloon, uh, but that was unsuccessful either. All right, so next I tried to get a buddy wire across. So in addition to strengthening uh, the vessel and uh, strengthening the backup, uh, the buddy wire can um, also act as a smooth ramp uh, for your equipment to slide down the blood vessel. But I couldn't get a uh, run-through wire to cross the lesion uh, with that BHW wire in place. I then tried a more slippery uh, Pilot 50 wire, uh, but that uh, did not cross either. I actually thought about using a dual lumen catheter uh, to get the body wire down, such as a Suzuki or a Twin Pass, but I did not think that either of these catheters could cross the lesion that the Turnpike LP uh, could not cross. All right, so what are uh, our options now? Well, we can try to get even better backup. Uh, this includes uh, inflating a balloon uh, in one of the OMs uh, as, an, as an anchoring balloon, or swapping the guide to something more supportive like an AL. Uh, we could also switch to femoral access and put in a larger bore, a uh, seven French or eight French guide that is generally far more supportive uh, than our uh, six French guide. Uh, we could also try to get an even better rail. Um, I like the wiggle wire. Uh, the wiggles of the wire uh, grip the distal vessel uh, to give you a lot of support. And the wiggles themselves also allow you to change the direction 
uh, that you're pushing uh, your balloon. Uh, we could try to modify the plaque. Uh, we've already tried stretching it uh, using our tapered microcatheter, uh, but there are scoring catheters, uh, such as a tornus and the turnpike gold, uh, with a stiff spiral tip uh, that's designed uh, for this purpose. Uh, we could also attempt uh, grenadoplasty, uh, which is intentionally rupturing a balloon wedged in the lesion. Uh, that's actually a nice technique. I have a couple of other videos uh, describing grenadoplasty uh, in detail. And uh, of course, we could stop and try again at a tertiary center uh, where there is access to atherectomy or laser. But in this case, my feeling was that this lesion might be a little bit too distal and the vessel a little bit too small uh, for either of those approaches. So um, we decided to try uh, to get an even better rail and do some more plaque modification. Uh, so I wanted to switch the BHW wire out to the wiggle wire. And my plan was to use the turnpike gold microcatheter to do the exchange so that at the same time, we would slightly score the plaque uh, while exchanging uh, the wire. But unfortunately, the turnpike gold catheter uh, could not cross. Uh, this was not particularly surprising uh, since the turnpike LP didn't cross either. So I gently torqued the catheter uh, clockwise uh, at the lesion. But then I could not remove the catheter. I torqued it counterclockwise to unwind it, but no luck, uh, it would not move. I torqued it back and forth clockwise and counterclockwise, still no luck, uh, it was stuck. Now, um, having been in this uh, business for a few years, you figure you've seen most things uh, at least once, but I must admit a uh, stuck microcatheter is a first for me. Uh, what are my options now? Um, I did not have an algorithm for this problem in my head, so we had to think on the fly. The first thing I tried is uh, IC nipride uh, to try to vasodilate the vessel and perhaps relieve any spasm uh, caused by the macrocatheter and, and caused by all of our uh, instrumentation. So the patient was uh, hemodynamically stable, so I gave uh, 100 mics and then 200 mics of IC nipride, but unfortunately, no luck. Uh, the microcatheter was still stuck and did not work. Next, uh, we had a guide liner already in there, so I advanced the guide liner to the tip of the turnpike and applied gentle counter traction with the guide liner while trying to pull the turnpike out. Obviously, uh, don't push the guide liner or uh, pull the turnpike uh, too hard. But that didn't work either. Uh, the uh, microcatheter uh, was still stuck. So all right, at this point, um, I thought that I would try something that sometimes works for uh, entrapped uh, rotobladder burrs. I was going to advance a wire around the tip of the turnpike gold and inflate a balloon next to the tip uh, to uh, dislodge it. But first, we had to remove the guide liner, uh, which was already over the shaft of the turnpike gold. So to do that, I had to cut the proximal hub of the turnpike gold uh, to get the guide liner out. After I removed the guy liner, I tried to get a Pilot 50 wire to go around the tip of the turnpike gold, but the wire could not cross. I then tried a Fielder XT wire, uh, thinking that it had a, a finer a tapered tip, but uh, that was also unsuccessful. I decided to inflate a 2.5 millimeter, millimeter balloon in the circ as close, to the, as close as possible to the tip of the turnpike gold anyway, but that didn't do anything. Uh, the microcatheter was still stuck. Okay, well, so if uh, the wire couldn't go around the tip of the turnpike gold, I decided to try to intentionally dissect and go subintimal. I thought that the wire should be able to get around the microcatheter in the subintimal space. Now, I wasn't so much worried about re-entry into the true lumen in this case, since I had easy wire access to the true lumen via the lumen of the microcatheter uh, that was stuck in there. So I was able to get into the subintimal space fairly easily with the Pilot 200 wire, and it actually had no difficulty uh, getting beyond the tip of the turnpike gold in the subintimal space. But then I still could not get either a 2.0 or even a 1.5 millimeter balloon even in the subintimal space across the tip of the turnpike gold. So I decided to create another dissection plane with the Pilot 200, and in the new dissection plane, 
I was able to inflate a 1.5 balloon next to the tip of the turnpike gold, and I followed that uh, with inflating a 2.0 millimeter balloon uh, in the dissection plane. Now, before removing the turnpike gold, I passed a pearl water wire with some difficulty through the cut shaft of the turnpike gold and into the true lumen of the distal circumflex so that we preserve true lumen access after removing the catheter. Now, I thought we were home free, and to my utter disappointment, the microcatheter was still stuck. So next, unfortunately, I don't have as any of this, but we tried to snare the tip of the microcatheter with a gooseneck. And not particularly surprisingly, we could not get the gooseneck snare uh, to go around the tip of the turnpike. I tried snaring the tip, uh, I, I'm sorry, I tried snaring the shaft uh, near the tip, but the snare could not grip the shaft uh, snugly enough and kept sliding up as we pulled. At this point, uh, we uh, were running out of options. And fortunately, uh, the patient uh, did remain remarkably stable. Um, so I decided to call uh, cardiac surgery to bail us out. So uh, while uh, cardiac surgery was on their way, I had one more idea to try. I was going to inflate the balloon near the tip of the guide, essentially a trapping balloon. Uh, this would pin the shaft of the turnpike gold against the wall of the guide. We would then pull the guide, the inflated balloon, and the pin microcatheter shaft as a whole unit. And that actually worked. The stuck microcatheter came free. I'm not exactly sure why it worked, but I figured that pinning the shaft of the turnpike against the wall of the guide allowed force to be applied much closer to the tip that was stuck. But I also suspect that all of the other manipulations that we did prior to this probably loosened that stuck tip a little bit. So uh, we called off cardiac surgery. Uh, you see in the final angiogram that there was the expected dissection in the distal circumflex from our uh, sub balloon inflations. I had a very fleeting thought about tacking up the dissection, but decided very quickly uh, to just declare victory and leave things as they are. Uh, there was Timmy 3 flow, the patient was stable, and he wasn't having any chest pain at this point. The patient remained stable and was sent home in good condition uh, after hospitalization on medical therapy. Now, sometimes a procedure like this becomes an investment procedure. With all of the microcatheter manipulation and the sub ballooning, there could be sufficient plaque modification so that the second attempt is a lot easier. But uh, it should probably be done at a center uh, with the atherectomy available. All right, um, take home messages. Um, first, uh, be careful not to over torque scoring catheters such as the tornus or turnpike gold. I am not sure that is what happened in this case, but it is definitely something uh, to keep in mind. Uh, we discussed several strategies to free an entrapped microcatheter. Uh, in no particular order, this includes the use of vasodilators, uh, gentle counter-traction with a guide liner, uh, inflating a balloon uh, next to the entrapped microcatheter, inflating a balloon in the sub plane uh, next to the entrapped microcatheter, uh, trying to snare the tip of the microcatheter, and pinning the microcatheter shaft uh, to the tip of the guide. Of course, if uh, all else fails, uh, call your friends in cardiac surgery uh, to get it out. Thank you for watching.